Hello, so today we'll be talking about uh, lecture one, the chemistry of amino acids, of which most of it, uh, most of this will be presented on the blackboard. So uh, this is a slide just to tell you that you're going to be taking notes um, in class. So after the actual notes in class about the chemistry of amino acids, the following slides will be talking about techniques for protein determination. So we'll be uh, exploring sedimentation equilibrium analysis, gel filtration, SDS page, amino acid analysis, Edmund degradation, mass spectrometry, circular dichroism, fragmentations of proteins into peptides. Now, this is not extensive, but this is um, some techniques that I've highlighted to help you when you're reading through uh, the assigned papers. So sedimentation equilibrium analysis is an analytic ultra-centrifugation um, method for measuring protein molecular masses in solutions and for studying protein-protein interactions. Um, the important things that it's valuable for are, one, establishing whether the native uh, state of a protein is a monomer, dimer, trimer, etc., any multimer. Two, measuring the equilibrium constant, or KD, for the association of proteins which reversibly self-associate to form oligomers. Three, measuring the stoichiometry of complexes between two or more different proteins, for example, having a soluble receptor and its ligand, or an antigen-antibody pair, or between a protein and non-protein ligand. Four, um, it's also good for measuring the equilibrium constants for reversible protein-protein and protein ligand interaction. So, in, in which case, the approximate KD range would be from 1 nanomolar to 1 millimolar. And the uh, sedimentation equilibrium analysis, or AUC, has been developed by Svedbergs and Associates in the 1920s. So, um, here's a little bit more of the details of analytical ultrafugation or sedimentation equilibrium analysis. Here's the instrument shown here. So um, when you look at a particle that's suspended in solvent that is subjected to a gravitational field, it experiences several forces. The sedimentation force, or FS, is proportional to the mass of the particle and the acceleration that it, it uh, feels. And so here is the equation that is used to um, determine the sedimentation and identify actually what's happening in terms of uh, states of proteins, whether it's a monomer, dimer, multimer, etc., or oligomer. And more information can be found here. Another method um, that we'll be talking about or that you'll see in the literature that you're reading is gel filtration. Gel filtration chromatography essentially uh, allows one to separate based on protein size or mac macromolecular size. It's also called molecular exclusion or gel permeation chromatography. In this type of chromatography, the stationary phase consists of porous beads with well-defined range pore size. The stationary phase for gel filtration is says, said to have a fractionation range, meaning that the molecules within the molecular weight range can be separated. So, as you can see here, um, you can monitor the absorbance as a function of what you're eluding out, and you're going to use um, uh, a mobile phase to help elude out your protein of interest, and depending on the size, so the larger sizes will come out first, smaller sizes will come out last. You can then separate molecules based on molecules. SDS page is commonly used um, for uh, separating proteins. Uh, it's SDS is sodium decal sulfate. It's a detergent that's anionic, which then wraps around proteins. Um, under denature, uh, in a in a denaturing conditions where the protein is become become linear. So, this is before SDS where the protein is folded, and then after SDS, those uh, anionic um, SDS molecules will line up around your uh, protein polymer, and in doing so, then it uh, confers a negative charge to the actual protein, which then upon separation on a on um, 
on a gel, on an electrophoresis, it will allow the polymer to run through uh, the, the gel, the page gel, and so you can then separate uh, protein molecules based on molecular weights. So another technique is amino acid analysis. Uh, amino acid analysis essentially takes proteins and then breaks them down by treating them with um, high, a strong acid and high temperatures to its amino acid components and, and then um, on a chromatogram identifying the different amino acids that are uh, comprised of that protein. Now, um, in order to avoid uh, degradation of certain uh, amino acids, tryptophan and tyrosine will need to be protected um, by use of thiol reagents or phenols as scavengers, cysteines because they can become oxidized um, on the hydrolysis step. It, you can pre-oxidize them to cysteic acid. Um, and then there's another problem of deamination of amides. Um, oftentimes they uh, go, they become, um, they decompose to the acidic uh, residues. And so in this case you have to determine the amount of liberated ammonium. And so um, after you know, doing pre-treating and doing these things, you can get, uh, inject them on an HPLC and then identify um, how many of the different amino acids are there and then quantify the amino acids. Edmund degradation, as we've talked about actually today, uh, or in lecture, where um, I've done the whole reaction, takes essentially phenyl isothiocyanate, uh, under basic conditions and takes the, the polypeptide and then um, generates this phenyl thio, uh, carbamyl, car carbamylated uh, polypeptide. Then upon subjecting it to TFA or trifluoroacetic acid, you can cleave um, forming this um, intermediate that forms the phenyl uh, thiohydantoin, which then um, can be uh, uh, identified and then you have your uh, polypeptide chain with an N-terminal amino acid and you know after uh, uh, cleaving off the first N-terminal amino acid. Mass spectrometry. Mass spectrometry is another um, means to identify the molecular weights of unknown compounds or proteins, um, and then it helps to um, elucidate the structures and the chemical properties of molecules. Detection of compounds can be accomplished with small quantities, as little as t 10 to 12 grams or even smaller. Um, and so you can identify very low concentrations. So fragments, um, so you have uh, your sample source that, um, in, that um, uh, generates gas phase ions, and you have an analyzer through ion sorting and an ion detector, which then um, uh, generates an output or a mass spectrum. So the fragments are separated based on the mass to charge ratio. Um, essentially you can use picomoles uh, and the samples don't need to be uh, homogeneous. You can identify atypical amino acids as well as post-translational modifications and as a result um, this is mass spectrometry is used quite a bit in uh, protein engineering and characterizations of proteins or peptides. So there are different methods of uh, ionization, fast atom bombardment or FAB MS, uh, plasma desorption M mass spectrometry, field desorption mass spectrometry, and essentially um, they uh, identify uh, peptides as ion products where you have your mass pl uh, plus hydrogen, and if you have sodium or uh, potassium ions, you can have mass plus sodium or mass plus um, the potassium. There's also uh, electrospray ionization mass spectrometry, um, and this has been used uh, quite a bit with polypeptides because it overcomes 
the invol uh, involatility of peptides. And so uh, you have a solution of protein in volatile uh, solvent, and then they're sprayed. And so you can then, uh, once you have a, a spectrum, you can deconvolute and you identify the actual molecular weights. Circular dichroism is another method by which one can determine uh, the content of some uh, secondary structure within the protein. Um, it uses optically polarized light that is shined in a solution of a protein sample and it can give you the content of random coil beta sheet and alpha helix. So if you look at a polypeptide chain you can have um, couplings that occur between pi to pi star and a pi star um, transitions. And so depending on whether it's in a conformation that is an alpha helix, beta sheet, or random coil, you get this uh, signature. So in the case of uh, random coil, you have a positive uh, signal at 212 with a negative uh, signal at 195, negative indicating the n to pi star as well as the positive indicating the pi to pi star. In the case of beta sheet, you have a negative 218 indica indicative of the pi to pi star and a positive at 196 and to p star. And then in the case of alpha helix, you have exciton coupling happening um, in the pi to pi star transitions, which leads to a positive um, 192 signal right over here and then a negative 209 as well as a negative 208. And the 209 is due to the pi to pi star parallel and the 222 um, is the n to, p star, uh, n to pi star. You can also then take a uh, monitor the protein conformation. Um, so if, for example, if your protein's an alpha helix, let's monitor at 222. So if we're looking at the stability of that, uh, that helix as a function of temperature, you can then um, generate a melting curve and then identify the melting temperature of a protein. The other uh, method that you'll be observing in the papers that you'll be reading for this course are uh, fragmentations of proteins into peptides using uh, proteases as shown here. This is from a chapter in the one of the texts assigned for your uh, class. And you can see there are lots of different um, enzymes get, that can be used. For example, trypsin will digest um, peptides uh, bearing the sequence. Another common uh, uh, protease that you'll probably um, uh, see in the literature that we'll be reading is um, elastase or even thermolysin in which you see um, uh, cleavage occurring with these amino acid um, uh, sequences. And so um, this is another technique that people have used also in conjunction with mass spectrometry to uh, determine uh, masses of peptides or, or sequences of peptides. So if we look at the specific ones that are important um, in terms of proteases, trypsin cleaves peptides bond after lysine and arginine. They um, modify the amino group of lysine by malleation. Um, and they can cleave cysteine by reacting with ethylamine, which makes it look uh, like a, a lysine and then can be cleaved. Uh, Clostopran submaxillatory protease cleaves after arginine. Endoprotease lysine, uh, lysolandin protease cleaves after lysines. V8 proteases after uh, aspartic acid and glutamic acid, chymotrypsin, tyrosine, phenylalanine, tryptophan, and, and leucine. Thermolysine cleaves before uh, leucine, valine, isoleucine, and methionine, and proline peptidase cleaves after prolines. Spartic um, and protease cleaves before. And so depending on these enzymes, you have either cleavage after or cleavage before certain residues. Um, and so that's that. And then Finally, in terms of uh, common 
uh, an analytical tools that's used to uh, measure proteins as we're going to be le reading primary literature. Here's a list um, uh, that is presented again from uh, the text showing the different types of methods that can be used to uh, identify uh, protein changes or chemical alterations of proteins. And so mass spectrometry, if you have any mass change that's chemical, you can use um, charge alteration, isoelectric focusing, ion exchange chromatography, electrophoresis, um, uh, neutral uh, alteration, reverse phase HPLC, hydrophobic interaction column and amino acid analysis, polypeptide cleavages, proteolysis or N-terminal processing. You can do sequencing, size exclusion, chromatography, reverse phase uh, HPLC, SCS page, isoelectric focusing, and etc. As you go down the list, you can, um, you can see the different types of characterizations that can be, uh, occur. So um, what's, what's really interesting or what's important to note is that in terms of structure, uh, oftentimes UV CD is used, right, as we've discussed. Um, in addition to uh, absorption uh, spectroscopy, of which we'll talk in the later lectures, um, and of which requires aromatic residues that are sensitive to changes in difference uh, in conformation, um, as well as uh, uh, IR spectroscopy, which can also be done to look at secondary structure um, and can be done in not only in solution state but in dry state as well. And then uh, when we talked about size exclusion chromatography, aggregation, when you have aggregation with proteins, this is often used, um, or assemblies of proteins, this is often used uh, to, to look at um, what's happening. So hopefully this will give you a sense of what types of um, techniques are used uh, that you'll be seeing in the literature as you read the papers assigned in this class.